Islam fundamentally, fundamentally rejects uh, terrorism under any circumstance, under any uh, uh, situation, cause or justification. In Islam, we believe that the rules are absolute and you cannot breach these, these rules even if you, are, uh, if you think there is some benefit. The Muslim terrorists are not motivated by Islamic ideology. You've already heard the former British ambassador saying this, but let's see what the terrorists say themselves and what the intelligence agencies say. Osama bin Laden was asked by Al Jazeera why he advocates that civilians are targeted uh, uh, in, in, in a war against the West. Osama said, yes, uh, the Prophet forbade in... Oh, one second. The Prophet forbade in authentic Islamic texts that, uh, that to, to kill women and children. He forbade this. But the law is not set in stone, he says. Um, the, he also says that the, the Quran says you should fight them as they fight you, which he says gives him license to imitate the West in military tactics. He cites Hiroshima and Churchill's bombing of German civilians in World War II as his model, not the Prophet Muhammad. Um, he also said that terrorism was a logical response to Western occupation and propping up of pro-Western client regimes. The problem with Osama bin Laden is he's not a fundamentalist. He's a modernist and, uh, who cites the West as his model of imitation. Arizona State University analyzed 2,000 extremist texts to determine what motivates uh, the extremists between 1988 and 2011, they it, it concluded that terrorists were not aiming to destroy Western civilization, but perceived themselves as fighting a defensive war. And they said, we conclude that verses extremist sight from the Quran do not suggest an aggressive, uh, offensive foe seeking domination and conquest of unbelievers, as is commonly assumed. Instead, they deal with themes of victimization, dishonor, and retribution. Former head of CIA bin Laden's unit, uh, Michael Shua, also confirmed the same. The think tank Claystone uh, commissioned a report from Aaron Kundani, which said a decade lost, rethinking radicalization and extremism, and they said this. In this light, recent threats of terrorism inspired by Al-Qaeda are not exceptional, but fit a longer historical pattern. The new terrorism thesis tends to obscure these connections uh, by assuming that since 1990s, religious ideology has begun to directly cause terrorism independently of, of, of political and social context. But as terrorism scholars, uh, Joran Gunning, Gunning and Richard Jackson noted, the behavior of those labeled religious terrorists is often indistinguishable from their secular counterparts. MI5's behavior, Behavioral Science Unit produced a restricted report, which wasn't intended for public release, but got released anyway, where they showed that uh, um, far from being religious zealots, a large number of those involved in terrorism do not practice their faith regularly and are religious novices. The MI5 report said there is evidence that um, um, if Muslims are well established in, in religious education or practicing, they are the least likely to commit acts of terrorism. And those who are the most secular or the most, uh, at least non-practicing, were more likely to commit acts of terrorism. In conclusion, Terrorism is conducted due to grievances felt by an identity group who feel they're being attacked, treated unjustly, or oppressed. It doesn't matter if the identity is black, white, Muslim, Jewish, Christian, Irish, socialist, female, like the suffragettes, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, all can be and have triggered acts of terrorism and violence in the name of identity solidarity. In the case of Islam, religious justification is no more than an afterthought used to reinforce the moral high ground amongst a conservative social context. As Osama bin Laden himself admitted, uh, that basically there is no Islamic law or interpretation that justifies terrorism. There is only the terrorist's justification of imitation of his oppressors. Not only do they copy the West, but are the manifestation of an equal and opposite reaction to two centuries of unjust military and political actions by the West. So it is clear that the cause that explains extremism is not an interpretation of Islamic law, but unfortunately a manifestation of Newton's third law. Thank you.
claiming he's following the example of the Prophet Muhammad because the, the Prophet Muhammad prohibited this. For him, he's saying he's following the example of American foreign policy and British foreign policy throughout history. Not the Prophet Muhammad, not the Quran. He's following Winston Churchill. He's following Franklin D. Roosevelt, the American president, not from Islam. So whenever you hear people say, and you always see in the news, they say, uh, they, they, they'll speak to a Muslim who's come on the TV and said, how do you respond to these terrorists who, who've committed this act in the name of Islam? You should say, excuse me, where did they say they're doing it in the name of Islam? It's actually false. Because as we know, the Quran prohibits the killing of, of, uh, of, of civilians. Yeah, they're doing it in the name of politics and foreign policy like every other terrorist group. And they should be treated as criminals. And if we accept that lie, then we are condemning our own religion and condemning our fellow Muslims to being hated. So deal with those lies. And that's how you get rid of polarization.